Everybody knows Rhonda, it's nothing new. Hey Steve, yeah. Does this guy thin his blood up there? <laughs> no, not him. <laughs> oh, the understatement. Good morning everyone and thank you for joining us for the meeting of the Tulare County Board of Supervisors. We're going to start today's meeting with the flag salute followed by a moment of silence. We will uh, be led this morning by the supervisor wearing the most pink, Supervisor Shucklin. That's it. Please join me in saluting our nation's flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. Hope everyone kept in mind the victims of the shooting in uh, Las Vegas during that moment of silence. Um, we will begin uh, with uh, Board of Supervisors matters now at this time. I'll look to my right to uh, Supervisor Shuckling. I knew you were going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> sure. Uh, last week, uh, and I'm sure Supervisor Crocker will talk more about it, but uh, we attended along with Supervisor Worthley the RCRC conference in Lake Tahoe, and there were some very good, uh, interesting uh, sessions that that had some good pertinence to uh, the rural counties of California so we were there uh, Friday I attended a CSAC Institute and tomorrow we have our step up youth challenge where we will have over 400 youth throughout Tulare County in both middle and high schools uh, that will kick off the uh, the um, step up challenge that they will be taking on community service projects throughout their community for the whole year and that will culminate in our red carpet events in uh, in April, the awards. So, got a lot going on. All right, great, Supervisor Ennis. Oh, hey, thank you, Mr. Chair. Welcome. I'm jumping around this morning, huh? Absolutely. <laughs> you never know. Well, last uh, last week we I went out and attended the at Portable Airport the uh, dedication of the two planes. The Sheriff's Department uh, are going to put in the air, and uh, the one plane uh, they named it Tribute. Uh, because of James Chavez and Scott Valentine who lost their life in Sheriff One. So uh, very, very good ceremony. A lot of people from all over the county there, law enforcement from all over the county. They also had their, their five or six drones, which they have had those displayed on the hoods of the vehicles. And the officers that have those drones, it's like an officer that has a, a, a police dog. Well, in this case, these guys have the drones. And so when they're called to a situation where they need to use those drones, we've got guys that are trained and, and very specialized in what they do that helps what's going on at the scene. So great presentation out there. Uh, uh, enjoyed it very much. Uh, they even let me get up and speak. I tried to act as literate as I could, but uh, had a good, good time out there. All the time was... Did they act as illiterate or literate? <laughs> well, I, take I've much. been called ignorant a few times, but if you can beat that, it, the stupidity is what you can't beat. <laughs> anyway... Uh, yesterday I had the uh, uh, Tule River uh, uh, Improvement GPA, which I serve on as chair at uh, Lower Tule, still working on trying to get the spillway uh, widened and lifted so we can put over 100,000 acre feet of water in there. Uh, we're at a DSAC 3 rating, which is good. Uh, the overtopping issue has been uh, put behind us. I think all the safety issues are put behind us. Now we're going into the planning stages, into the design stages, and one of the things that, that we're thinking may be a cost uh, a, quite a bit more is maybe the acquisition of the properties which are inundated when we fill the lake. So those are the things and concerns, but uh, still moving forward. I know Lake, lake Isabella uh, has got their uh, uh, remediation in place and moving forward. That's a $200 million project to fix the dams down uh, Lake Isabella. That's been an ongoing problem too. But when you look at the risk involved with Lake Isabella, if Lake Isabella was to break at capacity, look at the people in Kern County and Bakersfield that would be inundated by that. So the risk factor also plays into this when you're looking at a dam and, and remediating it. So uh, 
And then last week I attended uh, the San Benito Fair where my granddaughters were showing, and uh, they did pretty well with their, with their animals. Uh, my youngest granddaughter, Kate, won the sheep showmanship, uh, which was her first year doing that. She's in 4-H. And then uh, my older granddaughter, who's in the freshman in high school, is in FFA. She won the uh, beef showmanship. They went back in, and then my older granddaughter won the round robin, which is showing goats, sheep, steers, and uh, I'm trying to think of what pigs. Pigs, yeah, yeah, pigs. So we're pretty proud of her. She won a big belt buckle, and uh, so we had a good time. Was had by all. So that's all I have. Thank you. All right, Supervisor Crocker. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we had the uh, RCRC conference uh, last week, and there was a. Um, a wide variety of different topics throughout the conference, uh, including uh, millennial generation. Or are, are we supposed to use that terminology? We're not, but I'm going to as a millennial because I don't care and I'm <laughs> entitled, right? Is that what uh, we didn't talk you kind about? Of that. Buck, <laughs> and, and you kind of buck the, you know. Yeah, I know, I know. I was traditionalist, I about, said, but yeah, they didn't you believe me when I said that. Uh, and, th and we also talked about daylight savings time. But that was uh, among many other things, but those were two of the highlights, I thought. Um, on the, and the actual board meeting, because we, at the end of the conference, uh, we have a board meeting. And uh, one of the things that I emphasize is that um, we, we as a board have taken a stance on SB 623. And um, there, there was, as a whole, I believe that RCRC is supportive of that and the, the efforts in Sacramento have, have shown that, but I just wanted to make sure uh, that we continued on that track. Um, that, that has an opportunity to to clean up a lot of our disadvantaged communities' water sources, uh, provide some uh, long-standing financial help for them uh, in regards to operations and maintenance outside of just upgrades. Uh, and so we, um, I don't know that everyone necessarily uh, was was very comfortable just because. Fees are never uh, a comfortable topic, uh, but I think overall that uh, that RCRC will continue to support that. Um, I, also, in addition to RCRC, uh, this week uh, Supervisor Shucklian and myself will be uh, participating in United okay. Way's golf tournament along with uh, Miss Peterson uh, and uh, I've, she actually went out to the range I, I know she's scared I know. she's I know it's gonna be great <laughs> we're gonna take lots of pictures and uh, and uh, show that for to everyone <laughs> she's gonna need them um, before that the Tulare County Office of Education is having an art initiative uh, breakfast uh, reception at their office I plan on attending uh, Friday morning and uh, throughout this week and into next week is uh, Exeter's Fall Festival and I have been asked to participate in the selection of Miss Exeter this year so I will be <laughs> participating yeah what do I know about that I don't know <laughs> they're desperate this year <laughs> But I will be nonetheless. So uh, we have interviews this week and the coronation next week. All right, Supervisor Worthley. Hard to top that. <laughs> <laughs> As a short guy, that's good. One of the one of the interesting programs at the RCRC conference, I thought, uh, have dealt with the issue in Butte County of the Orville Dam overtopping, and uh, the sheriff and the and the CAO of the county spoke. Uh, they had the uh, misfortune of having their own county facilities immediately at the base of the dam. <laughs> and they moved all of their, over 550 prisoners had to be moved out of that jail and find a place to put them, not the Holiday Inn. And uh, they used school buses to move them. Uh, their, e their, their emergency services staff. people had to leave there. They were operating off of cell phones in different locations. And, it, they, and they vacated, uh, ha basically half the county had to leave. It was the largest, outside of hurricane situations, the largest number of people to ever be evacuated from an area in the continental United States in history. Uh, it, was a, it was an amazing accomplishment and no loss of death. I mean, no, nobody died in the process or anything like that. Then. Uh, quite amazing, and what they were, and the other thing was, they were given one hour, because they had been meeting with the the state of California. And said, oh, everything's fine, everything's fine, everything's fine, and then it was like, well, 
We've got this overtopping problem. It's eating at the base at the rate of about 30 feet an hour, and we've got one hour in which we think it could be this wall of water was going to come over the top of the dam. So <laughs> you're talking about an amazing situation. When the sheriff overheard them say, does the sheriff know? He, as he was getting ready to leave for the day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but it was an incredible story anyway, and a great, great accomplishment to, for that county and their and emergency services and the sheriff and the CAO's office. Um, yesterday I met with a group from the San Joaquin Valley Water Infrastructure Authority. We met uh, with uh, Fiona Ma, uh, who is currently the um, chair, chairwoman of the State Board of Equalization a former um, San Francisco uh, assembly member, and she is the likely candidate, and maybe the, the, maybe the only, I don't know, candidate for uh, state treasurer. Uh, it was a great meeting. I, I wish we had more urban legislator people like her uh, who understand agriculture. She was on the Ag Committee when she was in the state legislature, and she's been very zealous about going out and learning about agriculture and believe me, she is a fervent supporter of Temperance Flat. So it was really reassuring to see that uh, in, in from her. Um, this week I will be going to the beautiful city of Oakland to uh, be involved in the um, CSAC Executive Committee Retreat, and uh, I'll be reporting back from that. Thank you. Have a great trip in Oakland. I can't um, wait. A uh, couple things I want to go over. First of all, um, I received a call from a constituent in Woodlake uh, yesterday, actually, in uh, he has grave concerns about uh, the, uh, a potential move the city is considering to close their airport um, and basically convert that into uh, some soccer fields and uh, asked me to uh, voice that and make sure people were aware of that. And, and I think this county can be a good uh, example as to why investing in airport infrastructure is important. Uh, and once you lose it, the cost to get it back uh, is almost uh, insurmountable. So I wanted to point that out and not sure if you're aware of uh, that uh, measure in Woodlake, but uh, ask anybody who is involved to uh, uh, make sure that they are uh, fully evaluating all alternatives in that specific instance. Um, this uh, Thursday, we will be having a, a bid evaluation meeting uh, regarding the courthouse square, myself and Supervisor Shuckley, and I look forward to that along with our capital projects folks. Um, and then uh, Monday, uh, we have a very exciting swearing in, uh, kind of tails into the next item on our agenda, but uh, uh, so not, not to uh, at all uh, take away from uh, Rita's retirement, but uh, her uh, successor will be sworn in on Monday uh, at 8.30 in the east uh, lobby of the courthouse. So congratulations uh, in advance to Cass and uh, Look forward to that great event, and uh, uh, just on a personal note, any day I am expecting uh, the third uh, child of my family, and uh, we are very excited about that. So uh, if I have an appointment uh, scheduled with you and I have to cancel all of a sudden, you know why. I just want to let you know in advance. Um, with that, that concludes Board of Supervisors matters. We will now move on to item number two, uh, which is a request to recognize Rita Woodard upon her retirement as the Auditor, Controller, Treasurer, Tax Collector, uh, for her many years of county service, and I'd like to call forward Hailey Wallace right now to uh, uh, say a few words. Hailey. And she brought her iPad, so obviously it's a little more than a few words. Go for it, Hailey. <laughs> Thank you, Chairman, members of the board, Mr. Spada, and Ms. Peterson. My name is Hailey Wallace, and I'm here today to send off my colleague and mentor, Rita Rodard, on her next adventure in an attempt to recap an almost 45-year career. If you would ask some employees why they came to the county, they would tell you it was for the benefits or job opportunities. If you ask Rita, she would tell you that she wanted to make a difference. I believe she has accomplished her goal. Rita started her career in public service in the 70s as an accountant for the city of Lemoore. She then moved to Kings County where she worked for 12 years in the county hospital, the treasurer tax collector's office, and the auditor's office. Rita came to Tulare County Auditor's Office on April 10, 1988, Property Tax Day, an indication of things to come. 
Her first position at the auditor's office was as the accountant of property tax. During her time in the auditor's office, she was instrumental in creating a manual on property tax and apportionments through the State Association of County Auditors. This manual is now used by every county in the state and by the State Controller's Office to aid, their county, to aid in their county audits. Rita then ran for Auditor Controller Treasurer Tax Collector Office in 2006, won and took office in January 2007. The people of Tulare County showed their trust in her by re-electing her to the office two more times. Through Rita's leadership and support, the staff of the Auditor Controller Treasurer Tax Collector's Office has excelled and has accomplished many things, including updating the county, county's accounting system, system to improve tracking of service agreements and electronic fund transfers to save money and time on reporting. The Treasurer Tax Collector's Division has, was modernized, making payment processing faster and more efficient. This improved customer service, tax payers notification, and in turn led to the reduced traffic in the office and the volume of calls to the division. Implemented a fraud hotline where anyone can report improper activities within the county. Moved the office to a new website format to enhance the visibility and communication of other county departments, special districts, and the public. Move the office toward paperless operations, allowing efficient access to information for both employees and the public. Created audit committee to promote transparency and provide oversight to the county-wide audits. These items and many others have laid the foundation for a continuing success for this department. Along with being elected, a the elected official, Rita, has associated with several professional and charitable organizations through the years. Her favorite has been the Sequoia Visalia Kiwanis Club. Moving forward, Rita is looking forward to traveling down the road in her new trailer with Bob and her husband of 50 years and spending more time with her daughter and two delightful grandchildren. I hope to meet up with her on the road when I retire. <laughs> she is devoted, honest, and loyal person, and I am proud to call her my friend. That's it. <laughs> well, well done, Hailey. You survived the uh, whole presentation and made it till the very end without uh, getting emotional. So, uh, congratulations to that. So th there are several uh, dignitaries who are here to present you with uh, some uh, certificates of appreciation, but uh, I wanted to kick it off with the presentation. If you want to join me in the well, if we can get the security gate open right here. Um, this is the highest honor that the county can bestow upon any uh, of its employees, Rita. Uh, this is the great county seal uh, on a plaque. And uh, this is presented to Rita Woodard, uh, Auditor, Treasurer, Tax Collector, in appreciation of your years of service and dedication to the community and to Tulare County. Uh, this is dated April 10th, 1988. I was four to uh, October 6th, 2017. Um, and I know that doesn't uh, completely encapsulate the 45 years you've dedicated to uh, public service, but uh, 45 years is an incredible tenure uh, in any in any job, uh, but to, to serve in government really shows that you cared so much about the people that you worked with uh, and the people that you served. Um, and you know, in in dinosaur terms, which I know that uh, Roland Hill knows very well, um, he's been here for so long. He's a true dinosaur. But uh, you have actually had a shorter tenure with Tulare County, so you're not quite as old as Roland. And that's really good to uh, hear, uh, Rita. That is but good uh, to hear. I, I congratulate you. I wish you the best in your retirement. I know that you did uh, so much when you were here uh, with Tulare County, uh, and may the best years of your life be ahead of you. Uh, and safe travels in that trailer, and I hope that uh, uh, you and Bob have another 50 years because that too is an incredible accomplishment and something to be truly proud of. So congratulations to you and, and best of luck in retirement, Rita. Thank you,
the whole board like to come down and take a picture with Rita? And now before we give uh, Rita an opportunity to uh, say a few words, I'd like to call upon a few of the dignitaries who are here with us this morning. So, uh, Sheriff Boudreau, if you'd like to kick it off. Over here or whatever side you'd like to. Well, to the board, good morning. And to ladies and gentlemen here, uh, good morning. <laughs> On behalf of the Sheriff's Office, the men and women of Tulare County, I just want to be able to present Rita with... Uh, a little something to remember us by. And for me personally, Rita has truly been a friend. Um, she's been very supportive of me personally and professionally, and she's been very vocal um, <laughs> in uh, different times. But, but getting those words of encouragement are incredibly, um, incredibly kind. And you just have such a kind spirit about you for all of us that have shaken hands and spent time with Rita. We know she's a kind woman, and, and, and that goes a long way in government work. Um, well, we would hope kindness goes a long way in government work. But, but having said that, we just wanted to present you with a little something on behalf of the Sheriff's Office. It talks about your years of service, your commitment to our community, and really from me to you, congratulations on your retirement. I know you'll enjoy it. Thank so thank you for your friendship, and thank you for all that you've done for the county. Thank you so much. Thank you. Assemblyman Mathis, if you'd like to come forward, you're welcome to. That's the trick to it. So on behalf of myself, Senator Gene Fuller, Senator Andy Vidak, Senator Tom Berryhill, and Assemblymember Jim Patterson, I will save all the whereas is because we've already been beaten to the punch. Um, but just your work here, the, every time I've had an issue every time we've talked you've been phenomenal um, just a wealth of knowledge and then even outside of the office with Kiwanis and everything else I think every time I've seen you at an event helping children helping with red ribbon stuff helping with anything you've always been there um, so I hope you at least keep up that part once uh, in retirement so on behalf of the state and all your State elected officials would like to present you with this resolution, and the real one is coming. It's hard to get everybody together for the actual signatures. Okay. Thank you. Wes is here from Senator Vodak's office, so let's get him up here too. Thank you very much, Devin. And now I'll look to uh, Rita if she would like to have the microphone for uh, a few seconds, I mean minutes. A few so. seconds? <laughs> <laughs> well, whoops, it went dead. <laughs> I have a short speech, <laughs> very short. I'd like to thank the board for their support and for their budget through the years to do all the wonderful things that we have been able to do. Without that, we could not have done it. But I want to say thank you to the voters and taxpayers of Tulare County for their support. When I travel throughout the county, go to meetings, go to whatever, you know, just walk in the grocery store and stuff, people stop me. It takes me sometimes two hours to go in and get a loaf of bread. <laughs> but they recognize me, and, you know, it's pretty good when the tax collector gets hugs from the voters and taxpayers. <laughs> So I, I hope I've done something good along the way for them. Uh, and I want to thank my employees um, for their support and help, especially their wonderful ideas. 
Okay, because those ideas come out from their flourishment of the office, and they go, well, what if we did this? And I go, well, yeah, we could do this and this and this, and then we work it out. And it really helps. It, it's, they figure out how to do those wonderful ideas and make them work and make it better for the people of Tulare County. And, and that's what it's all about, is to help them. And I think we have, and I think some are here, and I really appreciate you guys so much. Because without you, it wouldn't get done. And without, you know, the public even, their ideas and stuff, but appreciate all the help I've been given all through the years to be successful. And I'm going to miss it, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of know when it's time, and I think I'm leaving you in very good hands with Cass. Um, he's such a good fit for the people in the office and such a good fit for the office. So well schooled and trained, and the county will do well with him. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Rita. Enjoy all your new wall decor, Rita. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'll put it in my home office. <laughs> Thanks, Rita. Uh, we'll now move on to item three on our agenda, which is item, uh, item three. Uh, uh, <laughs> it's a request to adopt a resolution proclaiming the week of October 23rd through 31st, 2017, as Red Ribbon Week in uh, Tulare County. Uh, I'd like to uh, call forward uh, uh, Captain Martinez uh, for this presentation. Captain? Hello, good morning. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Vice Chairman, District Supervisors, uh, thank you for the opportunity to be here today. My name is Captain Sabino Martinez with the California National Guard Counter Drug Task Force and also I am a member of the Tulare County Prevention Coalition. On behalf of the Tulare uh, Red Ribbon Planning Committee, they've asked me to address you today on their behalf. For the eighth straight year, the Tulare County Office of Education and the Tulare County Health and Human Services Agency are collaborating uh, to spread the Red Ribbon Week message throughout Tulare County. A special thank you to our partners Tulare County Prevention Coalition, Pro Youth Heart, uh, National Council on Alcoholism and Drug Dependence, Family Health Care Network and Family Services. The planning committee represents community partners uh, who are invested in prevention programs in Tulare County. <laughs> Red Ribbon Week has become a visible uh, prevention awareness campaign observed annually and it affords um, schools, communities, and organizations an opportunity to take a visible stance uh, demonstrating uh, their commitment to a drug-free lifestyle in support and against alcohol, tobacco, and other drugs. How they accomplish this is by the use and the visible use of the red ribbon uh, symbol. Uh, at this time, we have prepared a video for you uh, created by our students from El Diamante High School, and we'd like to present that to you now.
This year, the committee members selected to adopt the National Red Ribbon theme, Your Future is Key, So Stay Drug Free, as the official theme for Tulare County. Uh, we have presented the uh, Board of Supervisors a Red Ribbon t-shirt, plus a special invitation to the 8th Annual Red Ribbon, Red Ribbon Week celebration. The celebration takes place this year on Wednesday, October 18th from 3 to 6 p.m. at the Visalia Convention Center. The Red Ribbons are for you to wear and show your support during Tulare County Red Ribbon Week, which takes place from October 23rd through the 31st. In conclusion, uh, we continue to thank the County Board of Supervisors for their support, service, and commitment to supporting prevention programs. We ask that you continue to support students and families in discovering activities uh, that support drug-free lifestyles, not just for a week, but also for life. Thank you. Captain, if I can get you to join me here in the uh, in the well, I'd like to present to you uh, this proclamation. Thank you for that great uh, video and, and the presentation. Very well done. Uh, obviously, some real talent uh, amongst the students to uh, put together such a nice video. Uh, but I, I think the message of Red Ribbon Week is uh, so important uh, in today's society, and, and especially in the state of California, where you uh, see our uh, justice system basically decriminalizing uh, so many activities and so many drugs. Um, I, I think that uh, the impacts that these drugs have on uh, children's lives and on our lives, uh, whether the drug is legal or not, can never be understated. So I appreciate your effort and the uh, all prevention programs efforts uh, in this county and in this state to make sure that uh, our youth can lead productive lives and aren't sidetracked by drugs, legal or illegal. So uh, with that, I'm uh, presenting a proclamation here to you, proclaiming the week of October 23rd through 31st, 2017 as Red Ribbon Week in Tulare County. Whereas alcohol and drug abuse in this nation have reached epidemic stages, and whereas early substance abuse increases the likelihood of a person developing psychiatric disorders in his or her late 20s, and whereas it is imperative that visible unified prevention education efforts by community members be launched to eliminate the demand for drugs. And whereas rates of past year alcohol and illicit drug use were lower for youth who had seen or heard drug or alcohol prevention messages in the past year than youth who had not seen or heard such efforts in school. Whereas teens are affected by the influences in their lives, family, neighborhood, school, and community. When parents, educators, law enforcement, faith organizations, and community members unite in opposing illicit drugs, young people are much less likely to engage in drug use. And whereas Red Ribbon Week will be celebrated in Tulare County and every community across the nation during the week of October 23rd through 31st, 2017, and whereas, to help achieve this goal, the United States Department of Health and Human Services, the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, the White House Office of National Drug Control Policy, and the National Family Partnership, and the Tulare County Department of Mental Health, Alcohol, and Other Drug Division, invite all residents of Tulare County to participate in Red Ribbon Week 2017. And now, therefore, be it resolved that the Tulare County Board of Supervisors do hereby proclaim the week of October 23rd through 31st, 2017, as Red Ribbon Week in Tulare County, and call upon the citizens, public and private institutions, businesses, and schools in Tulare County to recommit our community to increasing awareness and drug prevention education activities, making a visible statement that we are strongly committed to a drug-free state. Signed by Kyler Crocker, Pete Vanderpool, Amy Shuckley, and Steve Worthley, and Mike Ennis. Thank you again, Captain, for a great presentation. <laughs> Students, if you would like to join us up here, we'd love to you to uh, come up and enjoy uh, a photograph symbolizing uh, Red Ribbon Week. And are these all the students who made the video, or do you want to introduce them uh, real quick? So good morning. Have the pleasure of being accompanied uh, by our students from El Diamante High School uh, who are responsible for developing 
uh, the video that was presented this morning. So uh, can you join me in uh, congratulating them and thanking them for their effort? And uh, with me, just briefly, who I have, just so I don't miss anyone's name, I have Sephora De Los Santos, Nathan Velasquez, Janelle Chaverian, Joseph Hernandez, Ethan Alberger, Jonah Munyan, Abril Altamirano Gonzalez, Christian Gonzalez, and Christopher Hernandez. Thank you. This is an yeah, action item. Uh, the That's chair will entertain a, a motion. We have a motion by Supervisor Ennis, a second by Supervisor Shuckley, and please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Next, we're going to move on to item number four, which is a presentation given by the Human Resources and Development Department and the Tulare County Fire Department regarding the recognition of Pink Tuesday. And, you know, I have to say I'm so proud of Tulare County for uh, – really pushing this effort and spreading awareness about uh, uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. You know, you go up to uh, counties like Humboldt, and they have every Tuesday be Green Tuesday, uh, and it's for anti-Red Ribbon Week purposes. But uh, I'm glad here in Tulare County that we have Pink Tuesday. So with that, I'll turn it over to Rhonda, who embodies Pink Tuesday very well. Thank you, Rhonda. Good morning, Chairman and members of the board, CAO Mr. Spada, and our council, Ms. Peterson. Um, it gives me great pleasure today to come before you um, in the sixth year uh, that the Tulare County um, has sponsored the Pink Tuesday. Um, usually it is the uh, second Tuesday of the month. We moved it up this year um, so that we could promote um, breast cancer awareness throughout the month of October. And that's what Pink Tuesday represents. It's the one day that we encourage our employees to wear pink um, at their work sites um, to bring awareness um, to the need for prevention and education of breast cancer um, and the need for um, regular um, exams. Um, we, last Tuesday at the health fair, um, had a mammography uh, this year we had a 40-foot bus it was a Susan Komen uh, bus that came and we um, offered um, free um, breast exams to our employees and we will be doing it again in the month of November uh, because we are in the midst of our open enrollment season so in November we'll be going to five county work sites um, with this new bus um, and providing on-site exams to our employees. Um, and for our criteria for our employees is that um, these are free. Um, it is part of our SJBIA and our um, Anthem Blue Cross Health Plans. Um, we are encouraging females that are age 40 and over. They get the first priority for our exams. Um, we are also recommending it for those um, employees who are under 40 but have a history of breast cancer in their family. The testing takes only about 15, 20 minutes. 
it's completely um, confidential. And um, in the past, through our um, exams, we have caught um, health issues early um, where the employee wasn't even aware. Um, and they went back to their physician and were able to um, get early treatment. And that's what it's all about, prevention. I'd like to acknowledge Lupi Garza, our employee benefits and wellness manager, who's sitting right there, um, and her team, um, who are um, really uh, encouraging the employees to get the mammography screenings, as well as promoting the Pink Tuesday. And we just finished our health fair last week, which was very well attended by our employees. Uh, and our Pink Tuesday was promoted at the health fair along with um, our open enrollment seasons. And uh, Lupi's team did a phenomenal job at that health fair, as well as the rest of the HRD staff that were in attendance. I'd like to invite up uh, Chief Charlie Norman, Fire Chief Charlie Norman, and his two captains. Um, Captain Adam Finning and Captain Hank Seguin. Um, and so they can tell you what the fire department is doing to promote um, Pink Tuesday and um, to promote the whole month of October. And you can, you can tell who they are because they're in these really bright pink t-shirts. Really? <laughs> Here you go, Rhonda. Very observant. <laughs> I'll collect your money when I leave. Okay. <laughs> Good morning, members of the board, Mr. Chair, Mr. Spada, Ms. Peterson. Um, pink Tuesday. Uh, starting this day forward, we will be wearing pink T-shirts for the rest of the month. I know you're thinking, I know there's a lot of cotton that gave up its life for the three of us <laughs> to wear these. <laughs> it's all right. My, my brother grows Perfect. cotton. Keep wearing it. Perfect. <laughs> Um, on a serious note, we've all been affected by this, uh, immediate family, friends, close loved ones. Um, there's just so many of us that have been affected. And in the fire service and government, we try and stay involved. We try and make people's lives better. We try and make situations better. And that's what it's all about. Um, so if you see a, a Tulare County firefighter wearing a pink T-shirt on duty, that will be it until the October 31st. Um, and you're asking yourselves, how can I help? Well, let me tell you how you can help. We have all these snappy pink t-shirts. Um, I'll let Adam talk a little bit about where the money is going to go with this, but they're $15 and seven of that's going to be donated. So um, believe me, department head meeting tomorrow, bring your wallets. Um, but a great cause because uh, not to belabor, but it's just so many people have been personally affected by this and doing something is the right thing. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Uh, thank you, Board, uh, CAO Spada. Um, yeah, once again, um, our proceeds are going to be going to uh, foundations through uh, Cahuilla Delta Hospital, which will be providing the uh, free mammogram and biopsy service uh, to people in this community and in, uh, and in rural, uh, rural areas. So um, we're looking, uh, looking forward to the expansion of being able to broaden our market. Uh, out to the county. Uh, we'll be getting out a, a, a website where any county employee can log on, purchase a shirt. Um, we have some already in stock and we'll be able to go to those various departments on days and just kind of drop off the uh, bulk purchases there. Uh, we definitely appreciate the county's support in kind of expanding this to uh, more than just one day uh, because that definitely allows people the opportunity to buy these shirts. Uh, but not only that, but support this on, on a uh, on a whole monthly basis uh, rather than just one day. So uh, on uh, behalf of myself, President Seguin here, our local, all our firefighters, uh, big thanks to the chief and the board for their support. So we'll be getting that information out. We have uh, shirts for you today. If we could maybe get our annual uh, our annual photo. Uh, we kind of have them. Is there NS on down? And again, thank you for uh, your support for this great cause. Is there a hidden cat on the back? <laughs> that was nice. Yeah, a hidden cat. Honda was involved. <laughs> I know they got my size. <laughs> <laughs> that might work. Actually, I'll put it on right now. Why not? 
<laughs> Start trying to picture with them. Turn around the. And while you're returning to your seats, this is just an informational item. And again, I'd like to say thank you to the board sure, um, and to the departments and employees who are have all been very supportive of, of this event. Um, each year we have more participation and I'd like to think that each year we're reaching out and educating even more employees and families. Thank you. I agree. And, and yeah, thank you, Rhonda, and thank you to uh, the fire department. I, I think that the uh, message that's being spread is that uh, a, a ounce of prevention is worth a pound of intervention, and uh, I really appreciate all the proactive efforts uh, on your part and on the fire department and all county employees' parts to uh, spread this great word. Uh, Supervisor Shuckling, I know this is a cause that's near and dear to your heart. Yeah, I just want to uh, thank you f so much uh, to the fire department for bringing awareness to this. And, uh, you know, to the county in general for offering these services, they're so important. Um, just a little bit more than a year ago, sorry, my partner went in for her annual um, exam and 45 minutes later received a phone call that there were some issues and ended up that she was diagnosed with, with breast cancer and uh, went through surgery and radiation and today is cancer free. But had it not been for that um, yearly checkup, no telling what could have happened. So uh, thank you all again for for doing this. Any other comments? All right, thank you very much. I sure appreciate uh, all of the efforts. Uh, next, we're gonna move on to uh, item number five, which is uh, public comments. I do have a request from uh, Kent McNatt. Please come forward and state your name and address uh, for the record. Even though in Tulare, <laughs> you need no recognition. Uh, former <laughs> high school teacher, just saying. <laughs> yes, I am from Tulare. <laughs> I like you already. <laughs> yeah. I want to just take a quick moment. It's been quite a lengthy morning, so I'm going to be very specific in nature. I'd like to thank somebody, in particular one supervisor by the name of Chairman Pete Vanderpool. <laughs> he's uh, he's a, a wonderful person from Tulare that graduated from the high school I spent most of my adult life teaching. Uh, history. I did not have him as a student, but as I look back at, during my retirement years, I'm very proud of him, and so were a lot of other people in Tulare. So with that in mind, I would like to describe him. Someone just gave this to me not too long ago, one of his former teachers. There are three kinds of people, those who watch things happen, those who say, what happened? <laughs> and those who make things happen. And this young man is the one that really makes things happen. I'm really proud of him too, so without any further ado, and because your meeting is already very long, <laughs> I'd like Pete to come up and receive this jacket with oh, the nice. Tulare Redskin symbol on it. <laughs> Even skin. though it's called the tribe, I don't care about all that <laughs> other comment. It's a Tulare Redskin jacket, and I, I, I would also like you to know a former Redskin gave uh, this jacket to me to give to you. His name is Rick Bacorian for Rick's Bending. May I say, good job, Pete, and I hope you continue being the best that you can be for all. How much?
Gosh, did that cost yeah. you, Pete? I sell like a memorial. <laughs> Is it? 700 for him, don't forget. Hey, well, I, I have to tell you, that, that's a first during the public comment period that I've ever experienced, but uh, I sure appreciate it, Kent. Thank you very much for coming. That was very, very kind of you, and I look forward to sporting the jacket. Is there something wrong with our audio system? <laughs> I can not hear you very well. well uh, is your ears still ringing from uh, Kent's boisterous voice? Thanks again. All right, next we're going to call forward our next uh, public comment request. Uh, I'd like to call upon uh, Alberto Aguilar. Uh, Alberto, please come forward. Sure. Did you bring me a jacket? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, flat, you can use either microphone. Jacket. Oh, but all my kids graduated from uh, Tulare Union, <laughs> and I'm, I'm proud of all of them too. Uh, I had I had gone ahead and put on the uh, on that uh, sheet there that I wanted to address the item eight on the consent calendar to have it pulled. Okay. Okay. So if you want, I can address it now. Sure. Now we, we'll, we'll pull that from consent. Okay. That, that's fine. I, I didn't. Uh, I actually didn't catch that. So yeah, that's um, what I wanted to. Go okay. Ahead. I'll, I'll pull that for right. a comment. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other public comment requests this morning? Okay, seeing none, I will close the public comment period and bring it back to uh, the consideration of the consent calendar. Uh, we will remove item number eight uh, for public comment um, and also want to note uh, that the request on item number eight is to appoint just Richard uh, Johnson. Um, item number nine will be a request, uh, we will be pulling that for a uh, separate comment. Uh, item 12, we will pull and add some score sheet information. Item 13 will be pulled off calendar completely, and we will have no consent calendar left when we're all done. <laughs> item number 27 uh, will be pulled also for a uh, separate comment. So uh, with that, uh, there's one item rema remaining on the consent calendar. Does anyone have any comment about that? I'd like item? to pull item 19. Okay, item 19 will also be pulled. Uh, any other items? You took the all the ones I wanted. <laughs> all right, members of the public. Okay, the chair will entertain a motion regarding the balance of the consent motion, calendar. Motion, motion. Second. Balance. I have a motion by Supervisor Anis, a second by Supervisor Worthley. Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. <laughs> item number eight, I have a public comment request from Alberto Aguilar. Please do come forward. And you can use either microphone, Alberto. They both work. Honorable Chair, Pete Vanderpool, and members of the Board of Supervisors. My name is Alberto Aguilar, and I came before you on July 18th of this year regarding the issues at the Tulare Public Cemetery District. One of the issues that I brought to your attention was the fact that the district was not posting vacancies of the Board of Trustees. This morning, I received a copy of the posting regarding the vacancy created by Phil Vandergriff, and I can assure the Board that the cemetery district has yet to be notified of this posting. It is unfair, in my opinion, for people who want to go ahead and serve on the board not to be notified of that opportunity. And I don't understand what the problem is when I have brought this problem before the board previously and I was hoping that it would be corrected. Now, we don't have internet service at the Tulare Public Cemetery, but we're working on that. However, we do have a fax machine and I was informed that these uh, postings are mailed to us versus via U.S. mail. I can tell you that I worked for the post office for 34 years and it doesn't take a month to get a letter from the district to the cemetery. It just, I can't believe what's going on, but I would like the problem rectified and I would like everyone who has submitted an application to be considered when they go ahead and apply for the position. That's the other issue that we have. I've heard that's one in individual in particular has applied four different times and she has been bypassed with no reason whatsoever. And to me, you know, something's wrong with that. If people want to serve, they have a desire to serve, and they're qualified, let's give them an opportunity. It should be on a first come, first basis, I believe. Okay? I went ahead and I, when I brought this issue to the attention of the board back in July, I noticed that in the office 
there is a flyer that indicates how to fill a vacancy. And when I reviewed that, it's a pretty simple application that's on here. It's a one pager application for appointment to a special district. And it talks about the individual's education and work and volunteer experience. However, when I went ahead and applied, there is a three page application that doesn't request anything about your education or, or anything else. And to me, you just fill out and check one box and that's it. And then you sign it on the third page, which to me is a waste of resources. And I can tell you that when I was on the grand jury, you know, they fitted upon us using too much paper. So we had to go ahead and buy our own paper. We had to buy rims of paper so that we could use. But when you buy paper, you also got to go ahead and buy the, you know, the ink so you can go ahead and keep your machines going. But maybe we ought to take a look at the application process and make it simple for everybody instead of wasting a lot of paper and resources. So again, uh, I'm glad to hear that one of those positions uh, you're not going to fill, that you're only going to fill one. And uh, I hope that we go ahead and use uh, a different process in filling the second position. Thank you for your Thank comments. you very much. Um, the only other correction to item number eight was uh, that we are just going to be appointing uh, Richard Johnson. Any additional uh, questions or comments? Move approval. Sure. I have a motion by Supervisor second. Worthley, a second by Supervisor Crocker. Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. We're now going to move on to item number nine on the uh, consent calendar. That's going to be pulled for uh, uh, comment. Um, Denise. Good morning, board. CA Espada, Ms. Council. Uh, the item uh, before you today is a letter of opposition to the California State Water um, Resources Control Board regarding uh, semi-tropic water storage district's petition and application to change the status um, of, on the Kings River. Uh, the Kings River is currently a fully allocated um, stream and um, this petition asked the, the board to remove that designation and potentially um, reallocate some what is um, referred to as flood flows. However, those that hold the existing water rights on the Kings River um, are seeing viewing those flood flows as um, needing to be allocated back to those that hold those wa water rights for um, groundwater recharge recharge under the new paradigm of Sigma. And so Fresno County and Kings County have both taken um, on an opposed position. Um, they've passed their uh, resolutions and or letters prior to us, and with that, I'm happy to answer any questions or comments you might have. Any questions or comments? Well, I would just like to make a comment, and I appreciate the presentation. Uh, I was contacted by the uh, Fresno Irrigation District uh, General Manager about this. I know that the Upper Kings, in particular, are taking this, this topic on, because as you point out, when we look at the probable loss of agricultural productive lands because of SIGMA, the Sustainable Groundwater Management Act, in the future, we need to protect all the water that we possibly can in uh, the region where this water flows. And to let people understand, the semi-tropic project is, a design, is designed to capture uh, flood flows and then send them all to Kern County. And uh, you know we just don't have excess water to be shipping someplace else when we're going to be losing our own farm property. So I feel very strongly about this matter and, and uh, greatly appreciate the board taking it up today. Supervisor Crocker. Yes, I'm, I'm glad that we we're also taking this up uh, separately because I I agree with Supervisor Worsley. This is um, this is something that we've heard from our farming community already about exportation. I mean, this is this is definitely exportation. Um, this is uh, taking water away. They're in. This is a group that is not cooperating with other uh, San Joaquin Valley counties in the effort to build Temperance Flat. They're in direct competition for uh, Proposition $1, and Prop Temperance Flat has far-reaching, better beneficial use for the San Joaquin Valley than this, this project. Um, so I, I've, uh, the Kings, Kings County supervisors have reached out to myself as well, and uh, I know they've been in talks uh, at, at the uh, San Joaquin Valley Water Infrastructure Authority, uh, so I'm happy to support this effort and, and make sure that we're protecting our water. Okay. I think the comments are very well said. Uh, Supervisor Worthley has a motion. Second. A second by Supervisor Crocker. Please vote. 
motion passes unanimously. Uh, next, we're going to move on to item number 12, uh, which is uh, we have a request to add some score sheet information to that. Yes, good morning. That was a quick technical change that we made to the score sheet. Just revise the calculation for the individual scores that were uh, provided by each uh, standard score. It did not change the outcome. It was merely revising the form that was provided as the attached agenda item. Okay, that's good. Any further questions or comments? Move to approve. I have a second. motion by Supervisor Crocker, a second by Supervisor Shuckling. Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Next, we're going to move on to pull item 13 off calendar completely and then on to item 27. Uh, item 27, I just wanted to have pulled uh, uh, just for a separate comment. You know, this is uh, similar to uh, what we had done uh, with our uh, community plan updates, and this is specifically dealing with uh, some legacy uh, communities. And I just wanted to compliment RMA on their outreach and community involvement in making sure that uh, uh, these unincorporated communities were very much a part of uh, the planning process. You did an outstanding job on the community plan updates that you've done up to this point. And I just urge you in this plan uh, process uh, as we deal with these legacy communities to exercise a similar outreach and, and be very thorough and inclusive uh, because I think that's going to yield uh, the best result. So I just want to make sure I made that point. And if you have any comments to, to add, Mike, you're welcome to at this time. Very good. Um, yes, there's a extensive community outreach for these legacy plans. There will be Hamlet plans following that as well as some other community plans. So we've had extensive uh, outreach to the communities. This is just the waiver of the first reading. In a couple of weeks, we'll be back with a full presentation about the legacy plans and the, the uh, applicable zone changes that go with that. So Great. Hey, thank you. Sure, appreciate it. Any further questions or comments? Uh, Roger just thank you for this. And uh, I think you heard last night from Three Rivers on a, on a slightly separate, but any community plans, they would be happy to have that. And so I strongly encourage existing community plans to come before the board as well. Okay. All right. Uh, Move for approval. I have a motion by Supervisor Ennis. Second. Second by Supervisor Crocker. Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. All right. Thank you very much, Mike. Um, uh, we had item 19. Item 19, oh, oh, item 19 I'm sorry. I, I went right past that. I, that's because Shuckley pulled it. All right. <laughs> um, go for it, uh, Supervisor Shuckley. Yeah, want Mike, to I did have a question. Um, in the packet, there were a, a lot of letters from various agencies that were contacted uh, that, you know, this could have an effect on. And in the staff report, it mentioned about working with the city of Tulare and Visalia. I don't see anything in here from the city of Visalia. Visalia, we were just received a phone call from Visalia, and it was just a, a, a quick inquiry, and they didn't have a comment. This is just initiation. I do have a PowerPoint if you'd like. Um, oh, no. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> just in case, no, we're always all, ready. No, we're it, ready. Uh, no, it, there's... A, but, but it's, it's this located just a little bit south of the city, and it's right. outside of any of their urban development boundaries, but it is close. It's about 700 feet south of the city limits. So we contacted both the city of Tulare and the city of uh, Visalia. City of Tulare, basically the comments were just to look at, do an initial study, look at the, the property. So, okay. um, and, and again, this is just the initiation. This is an approval. Right. This is just to move forward on right. the process. Okay, Great. that's all I wanted Thank to you. know. Thank you. So I have a motion. I uh, move approval. I have a motion by Supervisor second. Shuckley and a second by Supervisor Ennis. Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Next, we're going to move on to item 28, which is a request to receive a presentation and survey from Tulare County Association of Governments regarding growth scenarios for the 2018 Regional Transportation Plan, RTP, and Sustainable Communities Strategy. And I'll call forward... Uh, we have Ben Kimball and Ted Smalley here with us. Ben did not get the Pink Tuesday memo or uh, doesn't own Pink, and I appreciate Ted for supporting. He's relying upon his forehead. He's relying upon his forehead. Okay, go ahead. Mr. Chair, <laughs> members of the board, for the record, I do have pink on my face from getting sunburned this weekend at yeah, soccer fields. Okay, great. You might have egg on your face when you're, after you leave here. Thank you for the, uh, the opportunity to present this. This is basically for the board a repeat of what you saw at the TCAG board meeting. Um, we are presenting the, uh, the current status of the Regional Transportation Plan. This is a long-range plan for transportation projects in Tulare County and the incorporated cities. This is a federal mandate that we do this, and we update it every four years, and so the time is now to update it. There's also another component of this plan, which is the state mandate to prepare a sustainable community strategy to examine potential growth scenarios 
that could uh, result in meeting greenhouse gas target reduction targets. So what we have before you uh, on the colored posters in front of you and also on the sidewall displayed are the three growth scenarios that have come out of our sophisticated modeling uh, team. Uh, these are very similar to the growth scenarios we saw four years ago. Uh, if you'll recall, uh, the TCAG board voted on the blueprint scenario on the last go around and this is very similar to that one with just a few tweaks to the model to accommodate um, um, recent developments that have taken place during that time so make sure that those are reflected in the model and also just modernization of modeling techniques. So not a, not a huge change otherwise. Uh, we, we present it here to just so everybody knows the, uh, the three scenarios are the trend scenario which reflects if, if everybody in this region were to continue to develop in the manner that they are presently developing, that's the trend, this is what growth would likely look like in a, down the road in 22 years. If we um, follow the policies and the densities outlined in the regional blueprint that was worked on a decade ago and follow those densities, move forward, you would have some similar to the blueprint scenario. And if we took it a step further and increased density a little bit more and incorporated a little more transit and bike paths, uh, you would have the blueprint plus scenario. So those are the main differences between the scenarios. If you look at the poster at the bottom, you can see all three scenarios reflect different um, uh, performance measures. So you can see how much ag land would likely be consumed by development in each scenario, how much energy would be needed to support development in each scenario, et cetera for comparison's sakes. So what we've, we've done is, uh, with the help of Mr. Washington passing out a survey to everybody in attendance today, we hope that everybody can take a few moments to fill out this one-page survey. The most important question on the survey is the last one in bold, which scenario do you prefer? And so we'd like to uh, make that available to everybody and make ourselves available afterwards to answer questions by anybody here. And uh, maybe we'll stand in the hallway and collect any surveys that, it, that people would like to fill out. With that, we thank you for your time and I'm happy to answer any questions. The only question that I have for you, uh, Ben, is one that I asked before, and that is just to make sure to the public uh, that we are all aware that um, if you fill out the survey in English and Spanish, it still only counts once, right? Correct. It doesn't one count page, twice. One page, one vote. Okay. One well, page, I've already filled it out and determined that the, the last video, are we supposed to fill it out, fill it out again? Or? Yeah. <laughs> Stuffing the ballot box? I, I leave that up to you. <laughs> How would you like to do it? All right. Thank you very much for the presentation. Any questions please, from members please of use the public? Pink ink. Yeah. Any pink questions ink. from members of the public? Pink ink. All right. Thank you for the presentation. Sure appreciate your efforts. Take Good care. Good job, Ted. Thank you. Thank you, Ted. Very, very well said, Ted. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. Rising star. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Next, I'm going to move on on our agenda to item number 29. Uh, which is a request from the General Services Department to open, examine, and declare sealed proposals for the development of property identified as APN numbers 094-287-001 and 094-281-007 uh, located near 210 North Court Street in the city of Visalia, also referred to as the historic courthouse square. Uh, that's right. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Mr. Spada, Ms. Pearson, John Hess, Deputy CEO, General Services. As uh, the chairman indicated, this purpose of this uh, matter is to open the sealed bids that were received in response to the request for proposals for this project. The project is to develop the former courthouse known as the four story, which the project is called the Historic Courthouse Square Development Project. Um, as required by law, we are opening the sealed bids this morning, after which there will be an opportunity for members of the audience to provide oral bids. Those bids must be a minimum of 5% above the highest bid uh, received or the amount included in the two uh, resp responses. We did receive two responses this uh, yesterday. They were due yesterday to the county. And so at this time, I'll hand it back over to the chairman for him to uh, open those items and read the information. Okay. Uh, I will now open each response and read the following information. Uh, the land developer name, the purchase price per square foot, or the ground lease uh, per square foot. Um, I do have a uh, project uh, proposal from uh, Courthouse Square Ventures. Um, we have a, a purchase price uh, proposed of uh, $2,061,418.50. Um, 
And uh, then I will also open up the other proposal. Uh, this proposal is uh, from, uh, let's see, Legacy Investments, LLC, uh, or J.R. Shannon. Uh, the proposed uh, purchase price is $1.330,944 million. So $1.33 million, $944. And now um, I will provide an opportunity to receive oral bids uh, at this point in time. Is there anyone here wishing to present an oral bid? None of my colleagues? No. <laughs> I'm, I'm but does this, does this include the annex too? We'll, 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 we'll answer the uh, questions as soon as I finish. Uh, I okay. I think um, I have, have you got, two you got more an auctioneer? I'm, I'm, I'm not auctioning. bucks in my car. I'm not auctioning. You got 160? Um, 160? <laughs> Any oral <laughs> bid that is submitted <laughs> must be at least 5% higher than the highest legitimate sealed bid just announced. Um, and we have no uh, oral bids at this time. Uh, I will now hand it back to John Hess for concluding this matter. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, we have the two the two bids this morning. The uh, committee that was appointed by the board uh, when this matter was brought up for release a few weeks ago will be meeting this week to review these two responses and will return on October 17th with uh, the results of those reviews uh, and a recommendation to the board to proceed with one of the two uh, proposals. Okay, great. And, and to answer the question, at this point, I don't. I believe both of them have both buildings. I was scanning through them this morning in the in the meeting here, and I believe both proposals include the entire property. Okay. So the the four story building plus the annex building. Thanks, John. Any any further questions or uh, quick a comment? Comments. I, I Go mean, ahead. Uh, I just thanks to uh, John and to the ad hoc committee uh, for moving this forward. Uh, long time coming, and um, uh, just really happy to see the community responding with their. A desire to acquire this property and put it back into productive use uh, the balance of the property so really really a great day thank you and um, I, I also want to make sure that uh, we point out here that the request is to uh, direct staff to return on October 17th with a recommendation uh, to pursue negotiations or even to reject all bids so uh, all options are still on the table. Do you need a motion for today? Um, do you yes. want a formal motion yeah, for that? Move approval. Second. second. We have a motion by uh, Supervisor Worthley, a second by Supervisor Shockley, and please vote. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. unanimously. Thank you very much. I will now uh, look over to my left to uh, County Council and see if we have need for closed session. Oh, Council. Thank you. No, we do, Mr. Gone. Chairman. Uh, item pull a your microphone a down so that anybody can hear you in the audience. <laughs> we do, Mr. Chairman. Item A is off calendar. We have items B through E to be heard in closed session, and I do expect an announcement out. Okay, great. Thank you, everyone, for attending today's Board of Supervisors meeting, and uh, go out and enjoy this uh, pink month. Meeting is adjourned. Get your mammograms. I'll be uh, Facebook living. This is Deanne Peterson, County Council, reporting out on closed session item B is in boy. The Board of Supervisors directed legal counsel to defend Hector Ramos with a reservation of rights. The case of McDowell versus Hector Ramos Jr. The adverse party is Stan McDowell. The case involves a petition for writ of error and request to expunge record. The roll call vote was on motion by Supervisor Crocker Second by Supervisor Worthley, a 5-0 vote. This concludes the reporting out for today.